Hey, it's Kai here with another car review for your growing family. And if you're starting to find the constant onslaught of compact SUVs and crossovers a little bit boring, maybe you're thinking it's time for a switch back to a sedan. If so, how about the 2020 Mazda 6? It's up against some big hitters like the Honda Accord, the Toyota Camry, but it's definitely got some things that makes it worthwhile of your consideration. So before we get to the review, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch all of our reviews as soon as they come out every single week. But let's go check out the 2020 Mazda 6. This is the third generation of the Mazda 6. It started back in 2002 and the third generation in 2016 with a big design refresh or mid-cycle refresh in 2018. So this exterior appearance has been around for a couple of years now and pretty much everything from 2019 carries across to 2020, except for a couple of differences in what you get on trim levels. I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. But engine-wise, you've got two engine choices. Well, not really choices. That's attached to trim a lot of the time as well. The GS, the entry level, you get the four-cylinder engine, non-turbo, 2.5 litre, putting out 187 horsepower. And the other one is the 2.5 litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine, which is in this one, the Signature, which puts out 227 horsepower. Now, you can actually choose which engine you get in trim number two, in the GSL. You can choose which one you want. And I would definitely at least go to the GSL and then get the turbocharged engine because I always feel like, for me, the magic number in terms of horsepower that you want in an engine that's going to allow you to have all the capabilities that you're going to need, whether it be around town or doing some overtaking maneuvers on highways, etc., that magic number for me is 225 horsepower. So this has 227. And then Mazda actually quotes, if you use a higher octane gas, like 91 or 93 octane, you can get 250 50 horsepower, which is going to cost you more, but that's some pretty decent power for a car for getting you about town with the family. And the turbocharged engine on regular gas is going to get you 310 pound-feet of torque, which is available at a low RPM at just 2,000 RPM, which is very useful getting you off the line and getting you underway. Only one transmission choice though, it's a six-speed automatic transmission, which is not many gears for an automatic these days. I mean, a lot of the time, even the Camry has more. The Honda Accord actually has two transmissions one being the uh, six-speed manual which is available on the sport trims but then the other one the other selection is a CVT so personally I would go for either this or the automatic in the Camry over a CVT I'm not a massive fan there used to be a manual transmission in this that was discontinued for 2019. There's been talk of it coming back. Uh, Mazda have said that it may make a return, but there's no date or confirmation on that yet. It's a front wheel drive only, which is pretty consistent with its competitors like the Accord. The Camry though, that's always been front wheel drive as well until the 2020 model that will be available in all wheel drive, available in the spring of 2020. I would love to see this car in an all wheel drive option because being a front wheel drive, you've got 200 27 horsepower. When you do put your foot to the ground, it's a wet time of year at the moment. It's pretty easy to lose traction, to be honest. Okay, so I want to compare those engine choices to its closest competitors like the Camry and the Accord because it's pretty interesting. But first, let's get to some pricing and some trim adjustments for 2020. Entry level in Canada, the GS starts at 27,350. Of course, that's with the non-turbo. The GSL, non-turbo, 32,150. Or the turbo edition, that bumps it up another $2,000 to 34. 4,150. You got the GT at 36 and a half, and then this one, the Signature, at 39,150. The pricing in the US, there are five trim levels, one more. It starts at 24,000 for the Sport, and the Signature starts at $35,300. I mentioned pretty much everything is exactly the same from 2019 except for a couple of shuffles in the trim. So the second trim level in Canada, the GSL grade, that will now get the 19 inch alloys, which look fantastic. They've moved down from the GT trim. Also the paddle shifters have moved down a trim level to the GSL. That's if you choose the turbo engine though. The GT grade now gets the 360 degree view monitor that's moved down from signature as well as front and rear parking sensors. That's moved down from the signature to the GT as well. And everyone now gets a brand new key fob. Look at that, just lovely. All new for 2020. What about fuel economy though? Because that's important to us here at Family Wheels. So the non-turbo, the 2.5 non-turbo, you get 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway and a flat nine for the city, which is 26 miles per gallon and 35 for the highway, exceptional fuel economy. 
slightly poorer for the turbo but nothing disastrous so you're going to get 10 for the city 7.5 liters per hundred for the highway which is 23 miles per gallon versus 31 for the highway so fuel economy is pretty good now i mentioned the honda accord so you've got two engine choices in that one as well but to get this amount of horsepower like the mazda 6 with a non-cvt so you'd have to go to a six speed manual you'd have to spend forty two thousand dollars which is more than the very very top trim of the Mazda 6. The Accord does have slightly better passenger legroom and bit better cargo space, but nothing major. Similar with the Camry, so it doesn't have the CVT obviously, but to get the same horsepower, you gotta spend more than the top trim on the Mazda 6 as well, and that will get you their six cylinder engine, which gets you about 301 horsepower. So a bunch more and a bit more passenger legroom and cargo space too. What the Mazda 6 doesn't do that the others do do is the Camry and the Accord both offer a hybrid option if you're after it. So the mid-sized sedan market in terms of non-luxury brands, it's not particularly sexy, is it? Like think of the Camry, think of the Accord. It, what does it make you think of? It makes you think of a family sensible sedan, but this is something that I think that the Mazda 6 has managed to excel in. I mean, look at that nose. Look at the drop off on that nose cone there to the grill. Look at the lines on the side. Look at the back end. It's got much more appeal to it, I think. It looks much nicer. It's a bit more compact, a bit smaller, which you're gonna sacrifice a tiny bit on the interior but in terms of a design perspective I think this one looks much more appealing than some of its closest competitors and that's an area that continues on the inside as well I mean look at this beautiful interior this is the top level trim so it's got the set this is Japanese Sen wood trim this inlay here it's nice dark color and it's nicely positioned against this white Nappa leather interior which is both heated and vented um, I will say um, it was very nerve-wracking having kids in this car with white suede I mean god the thought of how dirty they could get that in a couple of seconds so if you've got kids I'm suggesting that you go for the darker tone there's two color choices on the Napa leather I would not go for something with white suede on it with young kids but that's your choice and the Mazda 6 does bring to the table a bunch of standard options which make it pretty peeling as well so as standard you've got advanced blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert the rear view camera, the eight inch color touchscreen display with Mazda Connect, we're gonna to get to that more in a second. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is standard. The leather wrapped steering wheel is standard. The leather wrapped shift knob is standard. Also, heated front and rear seats are both standard. That's not something you get every day from standard. There's an urban myth, I think, about compact SUVs and crossovers that you're gonna get more space. You're gonna get more trunk space and also passenger room. That is not the case if you're going from a mid-size sedan upwards in terms of size. Often, you are gonna get more. So for example, this one, the Mazda 6 has 416 liters of trunk space. It passes our standardized test for family wheels of the soccer ball, the stroller, camera bag, diaper bag, two bags of groceries, no problems whatsoever. And that trunk space, is actually more than Mazda's own CX-3, which is a very compact crossover. It's got more trunk space and passenger leg room in the Mazda 6. In terms of the rest of the Mazda range close around it, it's only got half as much trunk space as a CX-5, but it's got more than the Mazda 3 sedan, but less than the Mazda 3 hatch. That's just to be slightly confusing for you. It also passed our standardized test of the rear-facing kids seat, the world's chunkiest rear-facing kids seat, the Kleck Flow. The front passenger still has a bit of room, nothing massive, but it certainly passes the test. And passenger comfort in the back on that Napa leather is pretty good, especially with, from standard, those heated rear seats as well. Only the outside two have heated. Those back seats do fold flat, obviously, if you want a little bit more cargo space. But there's an interesting thing. You can't actually do that from the inside just here. You have to go around to the trunk and you can hit a button there and that will make them fold flat. And then of course, then if you want to put it back up, you walk back around to the side and then you lift it back up. Slightly annoying, but I don't think that you are putting the seats flat very often. There's a few things about the Mazda 6 which could be better just to lift the game, especially on this top trim level on the signature. So first of all, the reverse camera, the resolution is really poor. It's quite grainy and blurry. It's one of the worst I've seen in quite some time. That could be improved. These paddle shifters are very plasticky. It feels like I could snap them if I was too vigorous on it. Also the steering wheel, the heated steering wheel is only the side parts. So the top and the bottom are gonna remain cold. It would nice, be nice for that to be a bit better. Let's check out the rest of the interior here. This is, I think, better than its close 
closest competitors. This is nicer than the Honda Accord and the Camry and the Nissan Altima. It's very simplistic through here. It's uncluttered and I feel like, take a look at this, by the time you've got your climate control here, which is long and thin, and then down here for your infotainment system, you've got the wheel and the toggle. It looks very BMW or even Audi like, which I quite like. They've been quite successful in the design of the infotainment center and center console <laughs> for those two brands. So it's very, very similar to those, which is a bit of a bonus. I love the volume knob being down here. That's very nice. This console has a couple of nice sized beverage holders there. The top console is pretty small, but it's got your USB um, connectivity, your auxiliary. It's even got the SD card in there if you want to put play something through the infotainment system. It's the 8.3 inch screen with Mazda Connect. It's okay. It's got nice resolution and graphics on it when it's not in the reverse camera mode. Um, it's not got anywhere near, as I mentioned before, like BMW's iDrive 6 system. It's got nowhere near the options that that's got on it, but it does the basics. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It does everything you need, and it's very quiet. The ride noise in this car is to an absolute minimum, but I do think, and this is the Bose uh, sound system, the premium sound system in the top trim. I do believe, I couldn't find this written or confirmed anywhere, but it does have the sound Sound enhancement coming out of the Bose premium sound system because Bose has done it in a bunch of other brands as well. I couldn't find it written but I'm pretty sure it's coming out of the speakers when you put your foot down and you listen to it which I'm not a massive fan of. When you know it's fake, you know it's fake. Safety rating is another big bonus for the Mazda 6, so the IIHS named it a top safety pick plus and it had a five star crash rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Safety not a problem in the Mazda 6, top marks all round. Okay, let's just test the takeoff performance of the Mazda 6. Now, it's going to have 227 horsepower because this is the turbo engine. However, you should get more up to 250 as I mentioned on the higher octane. I did not fill up this car, so I don't know what it's got in it. So I'm going to pop it across. You've got sport shift or you've got the paddles and you do have sport mode. That is the only engine mode that you have, the only difference that you have on the Mazda 6. A lot of other cars will have eco and comfort and sport and all that stuff, but this only has the two, normal and sport and floor it. Wheel spin. Oh, hit the limiter, way! Hit the limiter and then away it went. <laughs> That's better than I expected, way better. I do want to try that takeoff again without hitting that rev limiter because that, um, that was annoying. All right, let me hit that again. Put it in sport and wheel speed. Oh, a bit of torque steer. It's nice. So that's the 2020 Mazda 6. Is this the car that could make you think, you know what, we don't need a compact SUV or a crossover. But hopefully you found this review useful. If you did, make sure you give it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all of our car reviews as soon as they come out every single week. Until next time from Family Wheels, I'm Kai.